Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Textual service base for our message is our Old Testament lesson from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. Dear friends in Christ, do you ever get frustrated? I'd like to share with you something that happened to me recently and see if you haven't had something similar happen to you. We received a mailing with a woman's name on it at our address. Now, it looked like a bill from a lab in the southern United States. So I saved it. A few months later, the same thing. It had an address that is undeliverable, so I sent it there. A month or so goes by, we get the same mailing. This time I take it and I send a letter to the company, basically saying we have lived here for 25 years and nobody with that name lives here. Doesn't work. Here comes another one, same name. So I call. They commend me for not opening the mail. And they said they would send me something to clear it up. Nothing ever came except another lab bill. This time, I shredded it. Have you ever had the same experience? You try to do the right thing, and it is just heartache and frustration. You know, we're going to see some frustrated people today. But the difference is, they are not doing the right thing. And the Lord is going to send them a bill, all right, and it won't be pleasant. Let's see what happens when God's people try going the other way. One thing we all remember about 9-11 is that the first responders went the other way when people were fleeing the Twin Towers. They risked and gave their lives for others. They purposely were going the other way that fateful day into the danger. The people of Israel complained again against the Lord when he seemed to be sending them the other way. It says in our text, from Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt here to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. What they didn't realize, of course, was that what God was doing was part of his grand design. Do you ever get frustrated and miss the Lord's grand design? Why are things going this way, you might say? This cannot be happening. Where's the promised land? You've got me wandering in the desert. And at times the Lord must literally get sick to his stomach. When we ignore prayer before meals, we regard worship as mechanical, or we diminish the power of baptism and the Lord's Supper, we make desolate that which is holy and pure. And so God addresses it with the law. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many in Israel died. Now he sent these fiery serpents for three reasons. One, he showed them his just anger for their rejection of his grace and protection these last 40 years. Second, He wanted to show, again, that their rebellion was the direct cause of their problems. 
Their previous rebellion had them wandering in the desert and not proceeding into the promised land. And the third reason, of course, is to show them their sin and lead them to repentance. Now that's a wonderful lesson we can learn from our forefathers. We, too, become frustrated with God's timing. Instead of direction through God's word and prayer, we take off for the desert. And we end up wandering aimlessly. And when we go the other way, away and apart from God, this is what happens. Now all this death finally brought the Israelites to their senses. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he would take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent, and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent, and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. Isn't our Old Testament lesson in beautiful harmony today with our gospel on this fourth Sunday in Lent? Jesus says in our gospel, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. You see, this action was necessary because serpents were idolatrous objects of veneration among the earliest peoples. But the rescue from death by God wrought through the bronze serpent was only a type of what he intended. When his incarnate son bore our sin and was lifted on the cross. When faith looks up to Christ crucified, God saves from eternal death all victims of the fatal venom of sin. And when we slip into going the other way, when we let frustration and rebellion dominate our thoughts, this antidote is provided by the Lord. He has absolved us freely and fully. We are spared, spared hell and granted heaven. And then when we go the Lord's way, he prompts us then to share this antidote. Our offerings, our prayers, our service, and our worship all work as the antidote for sinners everywhere. We need all of this daily and richly. So how about this? Let's go the Lord's way. Right into heaven. Amen.